Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Doug Olenek. I am the online editor for SC Media and your moderator for this program, which is sponsored by Cisco. Our topic is Hello, Direct Internet Access. Hello, Risk. Our speaker is Kevin Rollinson, product manager for Cisco. Now, before we get started, I'd like to mention one quick housekeeping item. There will be a question and answer period following the presentation, so please place your questions in the space provided on your screen, and don't be shy. We do love questions. Now, the increasing number of non-traditional users that utilize even more connected devices across disparate corporate branch locations are difficult for enterprise-level IT teams to manage. So today, Kevin will discuss how companies can obtain better performance and more security effectiveness for their branch offices. And with that, I'd like to turn the show over to Kevin. Thanks so much, Doug. Uh, happy to be here today to talk about uh, internet access, security uh, at branch locations. Um, my name is Kevin. As Doug mentioned, I work on the product team for Cisco Umbrella. So I know Doug talked about we're going to cover what it looks like to think about branch security. Um, but before we talk about branch offices in particular, I want to take us to another location. So I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was fascinated by space. I wanted to be an astronaut, um, you know, product manager in IT, kind of kind of similar, but <laughs> not really. Uh, but I was fascinated by space. And I think space and our branch offices have a lot more in common than we think. And Maybe some of you already agree, you know, uh, your branch offices may feel as remote as being in another galaxy. But if we look at a very simple view of how space works and how we send humans to space, uh, obviously I've cut out a lot of components, but you, you basically have three things. You know, you have mission control, where a lot of the people and the tools and the processes um, are happening to support these space missions. And that's where, um, you know, you can kind of consider that the headquarters. Then obviously you have the, the space shuttles, and that's how we get those astronauts out to space um, and to these various locations. And then obviously the astronauts and all the tools and the suits and everything that keeps them safe and able to travel. Um, and I think when we take this back to branch locations, we sometimes have a mismatch balance where we're either trying to do too much at our branch locations from a security perspective, where we're almost trying to replicate mission control on a spaceship, which makes no sense. That's like taking all those people, all those computers, all those tools, they won't fit. There's limited resources, there's limited space on a shuttle, just as that makes sense. So I think we sometimes swing too far that way. On the other side, I feel like sometimes we're not doing enough where it'd be like sending an astronaut into space without a spacesuit. Uh, you're leaving users sometimes at branch offices, totally vulnerable. Um, and if you, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to send anyone into space without the proper gear and tools. So to me, this is, this is a problem. Um, and it's something that we're going to talk through today, and hopefully um, I'll share some solutions as well. So it's not just hopeless. There's a lot of uh, things we can look at and um, some positive outcomes we can talk about. So let's get back down to earth and uh, talk about branch offices. So when you think about the traditional WAN topology, so here's kind of an overview of, you know, what our network environments look like today. So in a traditional WAN environment, there are remote users, there are multiple branches, there are IoT devices, mobile devices, and the data center. And you also have all these connections out to your SaaS applications like Office 365, Salesforce, et cetera, as well as the connections out to your infrastructure as a service environment, so AWS, Azure, et cetera. And with that traditional topology comes a lot of limitations. So most of the traffic today is backhauled through MPLS connections to the data center. So then it can be cleaned and thoroughly inspected. Um, but what this does is create a really bad user experience. So as more and more workers are trying to connect out to SaaS applications, they have more bandwidth intensive applications such as video streaming, et cetera, um, this backhauling creates a ton of latency uh, causing disruption to your users. You know, the next pain point is that this is also very expensive to deploy. So as new devices um, and clouds um, are added, they require additional configurations. And your deployment in this situation is not centrally managed. You're using a number of tools, and it can be difficult to enforce and configure policies um, on all these new devices. So this is a very complex environment. And more often, you know, you have multiple vendors um, that are needed to actually add a security layer on top of it. 
So not just from a networking perspective, but now you're adding the additional complexity of third party, uh, a mix of third party security tools. So you can see there's a lot of limitations to the WAN topology. Now to address these issues, we've started to move towards a transformation um, towards SD-WAN. Um, so I'm sure you've heard of SD-WAN, it stands for Software Defined Wide Area Networks. This enables a more efficient digital transformation that enterprises are looking for. So what are some of the benefits of taking SD-WAN as an approach? So it enables transformation in three ways. So first, you allow faster access because your transport is independent, so you can use the internet to reduce cost and directly access your cloud applications to decrease latency. So what does transport independence mean? So like I mentioned, instead of relying on backhauling, you can leverage broadband or LTE or different times, types of data transports that allow you to directly access the cloud applications without bringing that traffic back to your headquarters. With this comes um, ease of deployment. So you can, figure, you can configure and determine policy for your devices at scale with zero touch deployments. So it's really a turnkey solution that allows you to activate these new policies on your devices centrally, which, a, with, which has a whole new level of scale. And because you're bringing all these tools together, you have much more simplified management of all your security and networking devices from a central command. So this allows for increased visibility and analytics as well. And the software defined fabric is no longer a series of arrows like we saw in our last slide, um, but it's a mesh that connects all these devices and environments together. So it makes a lot of sense that the world is, is shifting towards this. However, with SD-WAN um, and the, the ability to enable direct internet access at your branch locations, you now open up your branch locations to new types of risk because they're circumventing your data center security that would that you would have in a traditional WAN environment. So this means you need to consider addressing several different security components to enable SD-WAN. You'll see here, you've got not only the WAN edge, but you have the cloud edge and you have your data center edge. So what some organizations have started to do is look at some point solutions. So um, what we've noticed is that a point solution security is not comprehensive. Um, so a lot of companies will try to protect one of the three areas we just mentioned. Um, like backhauling of traffic, for example. So it's simple for security, but it provides a poor user experience. Another way um, to protect your data is through Secure Web Gateway. So this truly you know, can improve the user experience as you're able to directly access cloud applications, but it doesn't filter your online traffic and leaves it exposed to hackers. And then third, you can use the edge router protection. So this allows for better performance, but it doesn't have that limit on authenticated access and segmentation that really provides comprehensive coverage. Um, so what a lot of enterprise level companies are doing is that they're building comprehensive SD-WAN security solutions, but they're doing it through multi-vendor uh, a multi-vendor approach. Um, so you're still having those issues that I talked about in the previous slides where you are moving towards an SD-WAN environment um, but by adding multiple products, you still don't have that single pane of glass, that simplified management. Um, and we believe that, you know, to address the needs of a modern organization, you really need to take um, SD-WAN, uh, you need to secure it, you know, from the WAN to the cloud edge. So what does comprehensive SD-WAN security look like? Uh, so here you see, uh, you know, that same topology we've been looking at. Um, you see we've got the transport independence, so networking can happen over, any, uh, over multiple means. Um, but you see that because of what we've added here, the branch edges and the data center edges and cloud edges are now secure. So let's look at how that happens. So first, the thing you need to be protecting and thinking about when you move towards an SD-WAN environment is outside insecurity. So what does that mean? So that means protecting your branches from threats that are on the outside that can come into your environment. Uh, this means uh, you need to have tools that can provide IPS capabilities, firewall capabilities, and URL filtering. So this branch level security is managed, can be managed through SD-WAN through a single console. The next thing you need to think about is inside out security. So when you're thinking about the secure cloud edge, um, this is where your users are going out to those SaaS applications. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're not protecting 
um, the usage of these cloud applications, your users are still exposed to risk as they connect out directly to the internet. So the things you need to be thinking about here on the secure cloud edge is looking for the ability to filter traffic um, while also you know, preventing and protecting the data that's sent to and from the cloud. Um, and then what you also wanna do at the secure cloud edge is ensure that you have authenticated access and determine that your devices and network, um, the devices on your network and the users on your network have the correct access to the right applications and you prevent um, unauthenticated um, users from joining. So it's a mix of making sure the right users have the right access and that the wrong users stay out. So those are things you need to think about at the Secure Cloud Edge. One of the things that's really important um, that you should be looking for as you're moving towards securing your branch locations and moving towards an SD-WAN um, environment uh, is that you really need a solution that allows you to achieve both security efficacy as well as network agility together. So what you need to do is one, like I mentioned, have a solution that can help you improve your security efficacy. So obviously this is, this is important because you need an environment where you have a short time to detect threats um, because of how complex the, uh, your environment is. You're not just looking at one location, you may be looking at thousands of locations. So you wanna make sure you have a fast time to detect threats and a fast time to prevent them. Another thing you wanna be able to do um, while you're having strong protection is still have a good user experience. Um, so you wanna be able to, since more of the work is going moving from the data center to the cloud, you wanna make sure that you have fast and reli reliable cloud access. Um, if you've ever been in the office when the internet goes down or you're experiencing slow speeds, you know that it not only puts everyone in a bad mood, uh, the IT teams get totally flagged down. Um, it's something that you really wanna avoid. Again, so as you're scaling across thousands of locations, a great user experience with fast and reliable access is super important. Um, the other thing you wanna to try to do is improve your network agility. So you wanna be able to minimize uh, your OPEX, your CAPEX, um, and the effort to add more locations, devices, and apps to the wide area network. Um, again, so kind of like going back to my space example, your branch offices will not have the full resources that you have at headquarters. And that means the full resources from a human perspective as well. So you might not have IT on site that can troubleshoot and deploy and set up these devices. So you really need stuff that is truly zero touch that um, you know, users in those offices that may not have the technical experience um, can handle, and then you can manage centrally from one location. Um, and then you wanna be able to improve business continuity. So by leveraging this intent-based networking, you'll, you're able, able to automate app assurance and improve business insights. So you know, the more visibility you have of what's going on in your branch locations, uh, the better you can make business decisions. And that's true everywhere. Obviously, like the more information you have at hand, um, the, the better your ability to, to you know, affect change and figure out the best approach forward. Um, so it's these four components working together that makes this transformation to SD-WAN successful. I think without these four components, um, we find that a lot of organizations, you know, they have just as much troubles with SD-WAN as they did when they were backhauling traffic from branch offices. So what does this look like for your organization? So every organization is different and there's not one single path that people will take to get to this cloud enabled environment. Uh, everyone's path will be very different. So one of the things we've done here at Cisco, um, we've been able to you know, meet our customers where they are depending on their needs. Um, so one of the scenarios we, we're looking at here is those teams that have more of a lean IT team um, that are looking for that really simple security for a simple SD-WAN environment. Uh, so this is a mix. If you look at that, um, the branch edge, you can see uh, where we were talking about the need to protect from outside and, and other threats. You can see here we recommend a Meraki MX device. And so what the Meraki MX does is it handles all of the SD-WAN capabilities, um, but it does it from a single cloud-managed dashboard that is super simple to use. So if you're familiar with Meraki, you know that 
you can just plug in the device and you can manage it uh, ahead of time in the cloud. So it doesn't take a technical user on site to set up. As soon as they plug in, uh, it pulls the configurations from the cloud. Um, and so that's where you get that protection at the branch edge and the SD-WAN capabilities for the MX. And then if you look at that cloud edge, that's where Cisco Umbrella and Duo come in. So Cisco Umbrella is our secure internet gateway. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in the next few slides. Uh, and then Duo, uh, we recently acquired, and Duo provides trusted access at the cloud edge. So some really cool technologies. And again, this is for an environment where you may not have as many resources, being, you may be set up in a lot simpler way. The next environment is, you know, still that simple security, but with more flexible SD-WAN capabilities. So this is for, you know, larger network teams with more complex WAN topologies. Uh, and here, uh, you know, on the branch edge, we pull in our vManage devices. And so, again, if you're familiar with uh, the Viptela acquisition that Cisco made, um, these are the, the routers that come out of that, but they are super simple as well. They are managed from a cloud-based dashboard, and they provide flexible SD-WAN solutions um, delivered through a rich services router and embedded security at the branch edge. And you still combine that with the um, umbrella and duo solutions that I talked about earlier to provide that protection um, and securing your cloud edge. So what does it look like to secure edge to edge across the fabric? So I've talked about a few of these different um, components, um, but for us it's really important to look at the cloud edge, the SD-WAN fabric and the branch edge. So those are kind of the three areas that matter most as you think about how you protect your branch locations. So let's take a look at what these different, you know, items that I have in the chart below mean. So to mitigate outside in risk, you know, you'll start on the left side with DNS layer enforcement. So that helps you cover all ports um, before the connection is established or a file is requested. So many infected devices with ransomware, crypto mining, and advanced persistent threats use non-web command and control backs that an SWG or a firewall alone wouldn't block. So that's why at the cloud edge, it's really important to have a strategy around DNS layer security. And then to mitigate outside in risk, um, we'll start with the right-hand side with dropping inbound IP connections that were not solicited or flooding your router. Then prevent inbound communications that are actively trying to exploit a protocol or device vulnerability. To mitigate internal risk, one of the best new capabilities um, that you can bring to your SD-WAN fabric is edge-to-edge -edge segmentation. So you, continue, you can continue using TrustSec-based zones or IT-based access control lists to segment the local area network. But agnostic to any WAN topology, the fabric automatically identifies and tags application or device traffic using VPN templates such uh, that it is completely isolated in the VPN overlay. So this ensures things like PCI compliance for point of sale systems or other regulatory compliance or requirements. So that's super important, obviously in retail environments or other environments that are heavily regulated, uh, segmentation uh, is crucial to ensure, um, along with other things in compliance. Um, so while most SUN providers you know, promise zero touch provisioning, um, none of them can provide the same level of zero trust authentication at Cisco. So besides one-time uh, passwords that every vendor offers, Cisco embeds tamper-proof modules within our routers, controllers, and managers, such that certificates are mutually verified before it is connected to either the control or the data plane. And so again, that's through um, our Duo technology. But uh, the, the basis of this slide is really showing that no matter your approach, um, from an SD-WAN perspective, uh, looking across the cloud edge, the SD-WAN fabric and the branch edge, these items listed below are really what we believe is important to consider when you're moving away from, from backhauling and you're moving away from direct internet access. These are components that are really important. So what I'm gonna do is actually hone in on one of these things, um, one of these components of the secure edge to edge fabric, and that component is DNS layer security. So DNS is uh, often an area where some companies don't really know who they're relying on for their DNS, and not just for DNS security, but just DNS in general. And I'm gonna go into that in the next couple sections. So one of the areas, uh, the ways that Cisco addresses DNS security is through our product, Cisco Umbrella. So Cisco Umbrella is a secure internet gateway that is built into the foundation of the internet. 
And what it does is it provides the first line of defense against threats on the Internet wherever your users go. We're able to analyze and learn from Internet activity patterns, and Umbrella can automatically uncover an attacker's infrastructure staged from both current and emergency threats and proactively block malicious requests before they reach your network or endpoints. So with Umbrella, you can stop phishing and malware infections earlier, you can identify already infected devices faster, and you can prevent data exfiltration. Because Umbrella is built into the foundation of the Internet and delivered from the cloud, it can provide complete visibility into all your branch locations, all your users, and it's one of the simplest security products to deploy and manage. So let's look again. I said some people may not be familiar with what DNS layer security means, but let's all level set and just start with what DNS is in general. So DNS stands for the Domain Name System. This is your first step in connecting to the Internet. So no matter what type of device you're using, if it connects to the Internet, it needs to use DNS. So this is a protocol that was developed many, many years ago. You can think of it as the phone book for the Internet. So when you're calling out to a website, it's really easy to remember the name of a website. It's a lot harder if we were forced to remember all the IP addresses. So that's why DNS was invented. It's to link domain names to IP addresses. So instead of having to remember 72.163.4.161, we can just remember cisco.com and get there safely. So like I mentioned, every single device you have, no matter where you are, is using DNS. And oftentimes you're relying on your Internet service provider, or you may have gone in and manually changed your DNS in your environment. Uh, but most organizations are just kind of relying on the default, um, the default system for DNS. And to us, you're missing out. Um, one, you're missing out on a simple way to add added security, especially when we talk about the need to reduce complexity at locations um, that are, you know, connecting directly out to the internet. Um, and you're also losing a ton of visibility because every device is connecting using DNS. You gain a ton of insights, and you're able to block threats really early. So where does Umbrella fit? So, you know, think about where you enforce security today. So, you know, you probably have a range of products deployed um, at both your corporate headquarters and your branch offices and on roaming laptops. So there are many ways that malware can get in, which is why it's important to have multi, uh, multiple layers of security. So Umbrella acts as that first layer of defense. Uh, before any types of threats would get to your existing security uh, security endpoint. So we use DNS as a main mechanism to get traffic to our cloud platform, and then we use it to enforce security. So because DNS is how you get to different places in the Internet, we will not let your users get to the places that are malicious. Um, so way before a malware file is downloaded or before an IP connection is made over any port or protocol is even established, um, you know, there's a DNS request. So one of the things we've added to Umbrella recently, which can be really helpful if you're trying to understand shadow IT usage and understand, uh, get more visibility across your entire environment, um, is app discovery and blocking. So no matter if it's users at headquarters or if it's users in the branch, um, our new app discovery and blocking capabilities use that DNS traffic. So um, it takes all those DNS requests and it categorizes them by SaaS and cloud applications. So you can see usage um, of, of how many people in your organization are using certain SaaS applications. Um, if there are applications that you want to prevent users uh, from accessing, there, it's really easy to optimize and block them. Uh, and we do this in a number of ways. Uh, so before you get to the level where you would actually decide to block a SaaS application, uh, we provide threat scores on those applications, and that takes into, into account a number of components. So one of those is vendor risk. So we look at the cloud provider and see different things, uh, such as how they store data, um, their, any certificates or compliance, reg, uh, compliance requirements that they've met as a provider, um, things like that. And then we also take into account um, how many people within your organization are accessing. So if there's you know one user accessing that cloud application, you know the risk score would be lower. If you're having thousands and thousands of users accessing something, 
that's where we would have it higher. So a number of cool components that take all that data, give you cool insight into what's happening across your environment. Uh, and so that's one of the things that you get as part of Umbrella on top of the proactive threat blocking that Umbrella does for sites that are hosting malware, ransomware, et cetera. So this is just one of our new reports um, that would probably be relevant. Uh, another uh, cool thing that we recently announced um, that deals with SD-WAN and the ability to make the deployment of Umbrella easy is a direct integration with Umbrella across um, our Viptela devices. So it allows you to simply deploy Umbrella across SD-WAN fabric and gain DNS and web layer protection against threats wherever users access the internet. And you can also create policies and view reports on a per VPN basis. So how does this integration work? So one of the things we do is you'll copy the API key in secret. Uh, so this is how Umbrella integrates with other devices. Uh, these are the way that you identify your Umbrella account within um, the network device, and in this case, so tell it. You'll then input that API key in the vManage dashboard, and that's it. So with this configuration, you're actually not even changing DNS. Uh, it's just those two steps and then selecting a policy. Uh, so you select which categories are allowed, which reporting needs need to happen, uh, and then you can also as I mentioned earlier, apply it on a per VPN basis, and you can optionally enable DNSCrypt. DNSCrypt is uh, our method of encrypting DNS traffic, and that helps protect against things such as man-in-the-middle attacks, etc. So that's one of the new integrations. As we kind of step back and look at, obviously, you have choices when it comes to moving towards uh, a, a branch office that is connected through SD-WAN, um, but uh, Cisco provides the most proven solution for both flexibility and simplicity uh, for both SD-WAN and enterprise-level security. So with our hardened approach, Cisco can allow all edge devices in the secure and the security they need. So with routing and threat intelligence, Cisco can leverage the network as a sensor and build an intent-based SD-WAN security solution on the, more trustworthy, on the most trustworthy infrastructure available. Uh, so more than just me talking about it, uh, one of the best things uh, that we, you know, that our customers find the most valuable is actually trying it out themselves. Uh, so I did a little bit of a deeper dive into Cisco Umbrella, our secure internet gateway. That's like the first easy step to take when you're looking for that visibility and protection for all your branch locations. Uh, we have a free trial available. Uh, you can sign up today. Um, the other solutions I talked about, I just you know skimmed over, but we do have solutions that provide the SD-WAN fabric, whether you're leveraging Viptela or Cisco SD-WAN or the Meraki MX. And then I talked about trusted access through Duo. So we also have the ability to try Duo for free, uh, and that's something that we, uh, we, we highly recommend. So to cap it off, you can try all the sd range technologies, but if you don't do anything else, we would recommend that you just sign up. Um, you don't even need to start enforcing it if you don't want to. You can sign up, uh, point your DNS, and just see the visibility. You'll get full reports into threats that are happening. Uh, then you can also leverage that cloud, uh, the app discovery and blocking report that I showed earlier, so you can start to see shadow IT activity. Uh, so that's a free trial you can sign up for today. Uh, and it, just to wrap things up, I wanted to, you know, this is not a transformation that's going to happen overnight. Every organization is different. Um, but what we see as one of the biggest benefits uh, of SD-WAN is really finding that balance between, you know, your networking performance and simplicity with security. And you can't forget one or the other. Um, like I mentioned, you really need to take a balanced approach where you are addressing both the networking needs that for your company and your users um, but you're not leaving them vulnerable via direct internet access. So you really need to think about how you can scale security and how you can scale your networking. And, you know, SD wins that approach. Um, and, you know, we'd love it if you tried out our SD win solution. So thanks so much for your time. And now I'm sure we had some great questions come in. And so I'm looking forward to answer those. All right, great. Thanks, Kevin. And you're right, we do have some pe uh, questions piled up. And as a quick reminder, if you have a question, please put it in the uh, place that's available right now. All right, we'll hop right to the first question. How does Umbrella protect off-network users? That's a great question. So I know during the presentation I was really focused on 
you know, branch locations and branch offices, but obviously most organizations today have users that are working not just in their branches, but remotely via coffee shops, airports, et cetera. Uh, so what Umbrella does there is there's a number of methods. So one, um, if you want to protect your roaming users, we have a very easy, simple, lightweight roaming client. It's not a VPN, it's not resource intensive. And what it does is it, any network, no matter which, or any device, no matter which network they on, they're on, will be routed to the Umbrella Cloud for protection and enforcement. So whereas a VPN, you know, sometimes a user may forget to turn it on and they'll lose out on that protection, this is always running in the background protecting your users. You can also deploy that same client via AnyConnect. So if you're already using Cisco AnyConnect, you can add the Umbrella module for free. It's super easy to deploy and your users will get the Umbrella protection anywhere. The third option of protecting these users off network is via uh, our iOS app, which is called the Cisco Security Connector app. So this is for supervised iOS devices, so that's iPads, iPhone, et cetera. We're able to provide the same protection uh, from Umbrella on network, on network, off network, on the cellular network. Uh, so that's something that we provide for um, supervised devices. All right. <clears throat> Next question. How does deployment work? Yeah, so I, I mentioned a couple different options, but um, depending on your location, we have a number of deployment options. So one of the most straightforward and easy ways uh, to do it is just changing your DNS settings. So what you'll do is you'll add your network uh, as a network identity in the Umbrella dashboard. Then you'll point the DNS of that network to the Umbrella resolvers. And that's how you'll start to get a customized control and um, you know, your deployment of Umbrella. One of the new integrations I walked through for our SD-WAN devices is uh, even simpler than that, where you just link your accounts and Umbrella is deployed. We also have a similar uh, network device integration for Meraki MR devices. So we're continuing to build uh, native integrations to make deployment even simpler, uh, but changing your DNS is the most straightforward way and that uh, most people can get Umbrella up and running in under 30 minutes. Okay, next. How is Umbrella licensed? So Umbrella has, there's a number of Umbrella packages. We have three core packages and those are all licensed per user. So it doesn't matter how many devices there are, um, you, you, the user is all that counts for those core packages. And obviously it's kind of a uh, you know, good, better, best approach. Uh, we also have a WLAN package and that is licensed per access point. That's designed for guest Wi-Fi environments where the number of users fluctuates every day. Uh, and we do also have an umbrella branch package that is designed if you are leveraging our ISR 4K um, integration. So that's another package that would uh, make more sense from a licensing perspective for your branch location. All right, next. Does Umbrella protect, protect against malicious data exfiltration and C2 traffic that connects to your system? Yes, so it, command and control callbacks, so that's one of the ways malware will reach back out um, and actually execute itself uh, and I think like, sometimes uh, when we talk about DNS, like 91% of command and control callbacks will leverage DNS, but some uh, leverage direct IP connection. So Umbrella does go beyond DNS. We also do protect against direct IP connections as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's one of the things that's nice about Umbrella is as command and control callbacks are leveraged by malware, we'll block it proactively. So the command and control callback is prevented um, you know, before the malware can be executed. Okay. Um, next, uh, does Cisco have training in place for this technology? Yeah, so we actually uh, have a learning site um, that allows you to learn about the product more in depth. Um, so if you go to learning.umbrella.com, uh, let me make sure that's the right site. I pulled that from memory. Uh, that is not. I think it's learn.umbrella.com. Yeah, okay, learn.umbrella.com. We provide training there uh, on the product uh, through a, a service called SkillJar. Okay, next, does Umbrella perform proxy services? Yeah, so our product today, we have something built in called the Intelligent Proxy. Um, and so what that does is 
it instead of proxying everything uh it will only proxy certain traffic that can't that we classify as risky so a risky domain is a domain that is known to host both good and malicious uh malicious items so obviously it's not something you want to allow outright but it's not necessarily a site or a domain you would want to block so our intelligent proxy takes those risky domains and analyzes it using uh, uh, antivirus, file inspection via AMP, uh, and multiple other technologies uh, to then determine if that risky domain is safe or uh, whitelisted. So it's an extra step, but what we like about it is that it provides additional uh, efficiency because you're not proxying all traffic. Uh, but if you're looking for more proxy capabilities that are traditionally found in a full web proxy, um, we, we are actively working on looking to address those use cases in some future uh, product releases. So, so stay, stay tuned if you're looking for more of a full uh, proxy capabilities. Okay, uh, next question. Does Umbrella leverage threat intelligence from Talos? Yes, so one of the great things of being part of Cisco is the ability to leverage our threat intelligence from the Talos team. So Talos is an amazing team uh, of threat researchers that uh, distribute their intelligence to all the Cisco products in the security portfolio. Uh, so that's one of the great areas we're able to leverage within our product. Uh, what's additionally great about the threat intelligence in Umbrella is that we also have our own unique set beyond uh, what Talos provides. Uh, because we have uh, so much DNS traffic, I think the last, I think I checked yesterday and we're up to 175 billion DNS requests per day. Uh, to put that in perspective, Google gets 3 billion searches a day. So that, and that's just not from one country or one, you know, set of people. It's 90 million users across 160 countries. So it's a super diverse data set. So we take the DNS data, we analyze it, we look for patterns, and that's where we are able to de determine and glean a lot of our proactive threat intelligence. Uh, so yes, to answer your question, we leverage Talos, but we also have some unique intelligence that is just available in the Umbrella product. Okay, next. Can Umbrella be managed through the Meraki dashboard or is it a separate dashboard? So one of the great things, that's a great question. So one of the great things about the uh, new Meraki MR integration is that you will actually select your umbrella policies directly in the Meraki dashboard. So you will pull that information, that API key and secret from umbrella, you will paste it in the Meraki dashboard, that will link your accounts. Um, and then you're able to select your umbrella policies and you can apply them on a, you know, per SSID or using Meraki group policies. You can't, um, that, that provides additional convenience. You can't uh, edit policies and do all the functions of Umbrella within the Meraki dashboard. So, for example, if you're looking for reporting on what's going on from a DNS perspective, you would still leverage the Umbrella dashboard and that with that Meraki integration. Um, but, you know, working really close to the Meraki team, we're always looking at ways to, to pull them closer together to simplify the management. Uh, um, but today, it's about the policy control within Meraki. So we're, we're, we're definitely um, pulling the two products as closely together as we can. All right. Well, that's great. Um, lots of great questions today. That's wonderful. But we are out of time, it seems, right now. So our thanks to Kevin for his presentation and to Cisco for sponsoring this program. And, of course, thanks to all of you for joining us today. This webcast will be available for viewing in a few days at www.scmagazine.com, and that can be found under the Events tab. Again, thank you all, and have a great day.